Welcome to This Day in Baseball and our Daily Rewind. My name is Tom Hannon and I'm your host. Today we're bringing you the actual radio call of the Detroit Tigers versus the St. Louis Cardinals Game 1 of the World Series on October 3rd, 1934. Dizzy Dean will start for the famous Gas House Gang St. Louis Cardinals and face the meat of the Tigers Hall of Fame lineup featuring Hank Greenberg, Charlie Geringer, and Mickey Cochran. I hope you enjoy the game. And before I let you listen to that call, I'm going to give some trivia to you. This player is one of two pitchers who gave up a home run to Babe Ruth and a hit to Joe DiMaggio during his 56-game hitting streak. Who am I? And now, enjoy the game. The World Series is on the air. This is Fort Bond at Navin Field, Detroit, where the St. Louis Cardinals and the Detroit Tigers start their battle for the World Championship. The play-by-play descriptions of all the World Series games are brought to you with the compliments of the Ford Motor Company. Mr. Henry Ford, Mr. Edsel Ford, and your local Ford dealer, producers and distributors of Ford and Lincoln Tires and Ford Trucks. The sponsors will be amply repaid if you get enjoyment from these broadcasts. In order that you might hear the play-by-play description of this game in its entirety, a number of advertisers have kindly omitted their regular afternoon broadcast. Among those are Cam A programs, usually heard at 3.15 over some of these stations. The program this afternoon will be heard instead at 4.30. Also, Procter & Gamble, manufacturers of dress, and the makers of Octodol, who are moving their broadcast from 3 o'clock to 4.30. On behalf of the Ford Motor Company and the National Broadcast Company, we wish to thank them for their courtesy. Now, fans, ladies and gentlemen, we present a man whose voice has been familiar to you over the air for years. Here he is to give you the thrill and color of this World Series pre-game atmosphere. It's wild around here, a crowd fills the park, but here is the man who can tell you about it and picture it to you right there in your home. It's Graham McNamee, and here he is. Thanks, boys. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen of the radio audience. We're at Maven Field this afternoon in Detroit, Michigan. We're in just about 15 minutes, or even a little less. The World Series will be opened by the umpire who will howl play ball. And in this case, it will be Basil of the American League who will be behind the plate this afternoon. When he yells play ball, then the party will start. Magic words for the 47,000 wild-eyed, rabid baseball fans gathered in the stands, while thousands run around the park hoping that by some miracle they'll be able to squeeze themselves through those turnstiles tomorrow with a shoehorn or something of the kind. The Detroit Tigers and the St. Louis Cardinals, the Redbirds, that's the setup. And his general opinion is correct. The next week could produce a series of games which will make the blood flow plenty fast through the veins of those fortunate fans lucky enough to be here and in the stands down at St. Louis the latter part of the week. The Bleacher crowd began to gather outside the park two days back, and this morning at 4 a.m. Oh, that's an awful hour to be up. I saw 5,000 expected Bleacherites waiting more or less patiently for the gates to open. They were a good-natured crowd, turning jokes here and there, playing cards, sleeping in blankets, or even in newspapers, those who were, who were not fortunate enough to have blankets. Even a bit of a trap shooting game was going on here and there. Penny Annie was indulged in. The weather coming into Detroit last night on the American Airways was just a bit threatening. It was very thick up above, and our ship even had a touch of difficulty uh, coming in because the haze was so strong. But it's okay now. The weather remains bad most of the morning, and it looks as though it might possibly rain. But about 11.45, the sun just managed to peep through the haze, and although it's not clear now, all thought of rain has been dispelled. That's over for today. Fastball pitching should go mighty well in the semi-haze of today. We're situated just off first base, on top of a double-deck stand, and although we're 150 feet off the foul line, we're so high up that the bag looks like a short jump from here. The series this year resembles last year's battle, in that both teams are under first-year managers. Frankie Briggs, the old Fordham class, took over the Cardinals after midseason last year, and Mickey Mike Cochran of the Tigers came to Detroit after last season. 
from Philadelphia, of course, where he has been under Connie Mack for many years. Both are playing managers, of course. Brief covering second for the Cards and still losing his cap now and then as he shags those Texas leaguers into right and center field. And Cochran, who is one of the greatest catchers ever to wear a chest protector. Both men know baseball from start to finish. They're no newcomers to the game. They're in there and know every move. And both are known as players who are at their best when the going is tough. As money players, there's no choice between these two managers, and they're the best there are. I don't believe there ever was a series that promised more color and spice and pep with that pepper Martin, Medway, Frisch, and the Dean brothers. Dizzy and Daffy for the cards. And Cochran, Carrington, Greenberg, and Schoolboy Rose for the Tigers. Detroit is more hungry for this series than any city in my recollection. 13 years at the microphone and World Series. The city has been eating, sleeping, and talking World Series for weeks and has packed every available inch of the stand. Just about every available inch now. They're coming in and droves, and it won't be long before we won't be able to see a seat in the place unoccupied. And to cheer the Tigers on to victory. Opinion as to the outcome seems more even than I've ever seen it before. The fine band has been entertaining the crowd, and Al Jack has furnished a lot of laughs with his antics as leader of the band and playing the clown at third base, as only Al can do it. The marble ground keepers has just been manicuring the base pads, and the foul lines have been newly chalked, and all is ready to grow. Well, the crowd color, in, from the visual angle, is not quite what we have seen it at times. The reason of that being, of course, is because it's rather chilly today. The men have on their overcoats and hats. You don't see any white shirts out today, and the ladies are done up in their furs and coats. So the color is just a little bit draft through the sand as it is through the sky. But the incentive to come to this series is there just the same. The umpires today are at the plate, Kaiser of the American League. At first base, that grand old timer, Bill Clem of the National League. And by the way, it's way back in 1909 since that Detroit won its last pennant. Not a World Series, but a pennant. And Bill Clem, way back there in 1909, was one of the umpires of that series. In fact, he's the only one of the four umpires who worked at that time who is alive today. At second base, Reardon. Clem will be at first. At second base, Reardon of the National League. And at third base, Owen of the American League. And in just about seven minutes now, they'll be ready to go. Those are the umpires. That's the way they're lined up. And as you know, the umpires are switched each day through the series, whether it's go four, five, six, or seven games, and they go clockwise around. In other words, the man on third today will be at the plate tomorrow. That is Owen. And they switch from day to day, going with the clock. I believe that Dizzy Dean and Al Crowder will pick. I think that that's official. Mickey Cochran has said he will pick Al Crowder. And Frankie Frisch comes through with Dizzy Dean. Dizzy, you know, has been hanging around Frankie Frisch's coattails for the past three days. Every time he got an opportunity to speak to his manager, he'd say, Frisch, can I pitch the opening game? And Frisch would look at him and say, maybe. Well, that didn't do Dizzy much good for a while. I suppose because he just didn't know where he was standing and he was just wild to pitch this game. But finally Frankie came through and allowed his great eight, who is who has with his brother practically pinched the pennant for the National League team, the Cardinals, will pitch the first game. Star for Detroit, who was one of the outstanding features of the year uh, to bring Detroit the flag, will not work today. He will probably Probably be picked in the second game, possibly against uh, Daffy Dean. 
Dizzy's brother uh, tomorrow afternoon. That is schoolboy row. But today, it almost certainly will be Dizzy Dean and Al Crowder. Dizzy Dean for the Cardinals, Al Crowder for the Tigers. And now, let me go through the lineup for the afternoon. I believe this to be correct, and if there are any changes, we will give them to you when they are announced. We'll give you the visitors first, St. Louis Cardinals. Leading off, Martin, Pepper Martin, who simply walked away with a World Series in his pocket several years ago. That was, in my experience, the greatest one-man effort I have ever seen in baseball. Pepper Martin, third base for the Cardinals. Ross Rock, R-O-C-H, R-O-C-K, right field. Frankie Frick, manager, second base. Medwick, in the green up position, left field. Medwick, Collins, at first base. Delancey, D-E-L-A-N-C-E-Y, catching. Orsaki, O-R-S-A-T-D-I, center field. Durocher, D-U-R-O-C-H-E-R, shortstop. Durocher, one of the greatest of all shortstops in the field. Not a terrific batter, but a marvel down there, getting in the way of those balls and getting them over to first base. And Jerome Dean, kicking for the Tigers. Detroit, Sight is the leadoff man. Center field. Mike Cochran has put himself in the second position. Mike used to bat third and fourth, you know, cleaning up. But now he is up in second place. D-O-C-H-R-A-N-E, catching. Derringer, D-E-H-R-I-N-G-E-R. Marvelous batting boy that plays second base for the Detroit Tigers and one of the real reasons why Detroit is up there and in this series today. Greenberg, last year, just a rookie practically, just another first baseman, and today, one of the big soft dove baseball stars. Greenberg, first base. And then that old Washington boy, whose acquisition was one of Cochran's big, fine steps this year, Bruce Goslin. You know, we've seen him playing World Series in Washington these many years. Now he's over with Detroit because Cochran was wise enough to pick him up. Rogel at short, R-O-G-E-L-L, short. Owen at third base, O-W-E-N. Fox in right field, and Al Crowder will do the pitching. The umpires, we will repeat. There has been a change in the umpires, in their position. We gave you what we had, but there has been a change. Owen is behind the plate. Clem, Bill Clem, at first base. Geisel, at second base. And Reardon will be over at third. And now it's just two and a half minutes before this ball game is going to begin. And I'm going to turn this microphone over, let the boys who are going to work inning by inning talk for a moment just to loosen up their whistles a little bit so that they'll get started on the right foot. First, Ford Bond will speak to you for a moment. He will turn the microphone over to Tom Manning. Ford Bond of New York and Tom Manning of Cleveland. We're going to call him his nickname, but I believe we've stopped calling him that nickname. Tom, what do you think of that? <laughs> anyway, Ford Bond will speak. Then Tom will speak to you. And boys, we're going to start the game. Tom Manning. Tom Manning will work four and a half innings, followed by Ford Bond for four and a half innings. And now the umpires and the managers are about home plate. 
talking the situation over for a moment, talking of certain ground rules, and getting ready to go. The field is clear. All that's out there in the field are a few fielders with lying on the ground. And come on, Ford, take this microphone. Ford Bond. The boys are just about ready to go out and start this man's ball game for the first game of the 1934 World Series between the St. Louis Cardinals and the Tigers of Detroit. There's the national anthem. Let's listen. Just a moment to those Jean brothers again. Uh, St. Louis won 12 or uh, 15 shutouts this year. The Jeans scoring 12 of them and the balance of the staff three. Boys, listen to that crowd here as the boys go out into the field. Uh, Jerome won seven of those 12 shutouts and Paul five. The balance of the staff three and Paul also had his great no-hit game against Brooklyn. Now, the boys are out in the field and in just a few moments, this ball game is going to start opening the series and my old pal Tommy Manning of Cleveland, come on in. Thank you, Graham. Good afternoon, everybody. We're over at Naval Field, Detroit today. What a season this is done in baseball. What two teams we have out here, the color, color galore. The team brothers, it's Juzzi and Daffy. It's that kind of a series, if you please. Over here in Detroit, for the first time in the history of the World Series, we've been postponed for 20 minutes to allow the crowd to get in. These fans here are so excited, so enthused over the uh, expectancy of the color in this World Series that they have all taken a good nature. The band has just left the field. Detroit Tigers are out there now passing the ball around. Hello, Black Hill, that they've been using throughout the season. It's so black that it looks like a piece of coal. And that kind of a right-hander, formerly of the Washington Senators, General Crowder, who picked a great season in 1933, a former in the World Series. Perhaps due to overwork, he is out there being acclaimed again by these enthusiastic Detroit Blues. Manager Mike Cochran, one of the greatest catches of all time, goes to the receiving. Here's the last minute official lineup again. Well, St. Louis, Pepper Martin at third. Jack Walfrock in right. Manager Fritz at second. Medwick in left. Collins at first. Gilancy, Cat. Orsatti, center. DeRocher, short. And the great Jerome Dizzy Dean in the box. They say he's dizzy. I wish we was dizzy too. For Detroit, White, center. Manager Cochran, Pat. Geringer, second. Hank Greenberg, first. Luke Garvin, left. Billy Rogel, short. Owen, third. They say he's the most improved player in the majors this year. Fox in right field. Crowder pitching. Umpire Brick Owen behind the back. Clem at first. Geisel at second. Reardon at third. The umpire calls play ball. Pepper Martin, the right-hand hitter, is stepped into the box. A great cheer goes up. General Crowder takes his glove off. Stands back near the rosin bag. Looks out towards center field. He has his outfield as all spotted. The old general steps up on the rubber. It won't be long now. Cochran trucks behind the plate. Pepper Martin taking his aim, swinging that old bat up and down. In that Louis gray uniform with Cardinal Red. 
Green, the bat up and down, up goes Carter's arm. The World Series is on, the first pitch. It's a bounder down third base. Owen has her. He whips it across the diamond. Green and Martin is out. Run away. The first ball pitch. General Carter taking a slow wind-up. Hit that ball over the heart of the plate. Cut the mark, the right-hand batter swung on too hot. Carvel and stepped over. Now Gillespie picked it up. Tossed it over to Big Hank Greenberg. The series is on. The Cardinals in the first inning. One out. Nobody on. Jack Rothrock, formerly of the American League, playing a great game in right field for the Cardinals. He bats him left-handed. Reputed to be a very fast runner. One of the fastest in the major league. The pitch. It's outside. Ball one. Jack Rothrock making a slow, easy aim at the pitcher, and here it comes, and there it goes, a high fly in center field, out in the center field, and White is waiting for it, he has it, two men out, Fox with that old, White with that old ball, and he's got a Garinger, Garinger to Owen, to Greenberg, to Owen, to Greenberg, they almost knock each other down, and Greenberg bottles the ball a moment, crosses it over to General Crowder, and we're ready to go, Frankie Quick. Frankie Fitch, the manager of the Cardinals, a left-hand hitter is that bat. He's a switch hitter, you know. And here it is. Right ball, up back ball, right down the old alley. Right one on the Cardinal manager, Frankie Fitch. Two men out in the first inning. Nobody is on. The wind-up, the pitch. A half swing, but it's declared a ball. And the count is ball one and straight one. Frankie Fitch is all set to land base. That will clear out of the cherry seed, as they call it. And now the count of the cargo manager, ball one, and strike one. Quick steps out of the box. Get the pinch of dirt. Knocks the ducks off the shoes, and he's back in there again. The signal, and the wind-up. Ball one, strike one, two out, nobody on. Here it is. He swings at the ground ball. The ball on, back down. It's over near short. Oh, goes over, he the ball, but is unable to make a play. And I'm sure it is a base hit for the cargo manager, Frankie Quick. That was a ground ball. It is scored as an error. That ball was hit to the left of Bravo. He leaped over for it, batted it over towards shortstop. But Rogel was running over to back him up. He batted it over to the regular shortstop position and was unable to make a play. It is scored as an error for Bravo, the third baseman. Now we have Joey Ledwick up, hits the first ball, pitches the base hit in the left field. Frick is rounding second base. Gosling retrieves the ball, puts it into Rogel at third. Frick stops the second. A single. Now we have others on first and second. Frankie Fitch is on second. Medwick, Frankie Fitch on second. Medwick on first. Two men out in the first inning. And Rip Collins, who has hit 35 home runs this year. For the St. Louis Cardinals, the left-hand batter is up. General Crowder, a right-hand pitcher, is in the box. Gets the signal. Looks out for second. And here it is. Hits the first ball. Hits at the side and it's center field. White is backing up. He's under it. He has it. In the first inning, no runs, one hit, and one error. Runners remain on first and second at the conclusion of the first half of the first inning. Come in for it. That was a tense moment with two men on, two out, and Rip Collins at bat. Man who slapped out 35 homers this year. Here's the way that inning worked. Martin came up, matched the first hit down the third, and was out on the Fast throw from Owen over to Greenberg, reached the first backer just about five feet before the runner got there. Then Rothrock, Rothrock came up, slapped the second pitch on a high fly, sailing way out into center field with a hard driven ball, but Jojo White was there when it came down, and two men were out. Frankie Frisch came up. Frankie Frisch drove one hard to the left of Marvo, and down on 30 came out, got his hands on the ball, and Frisch went on down to first with space on Owen Zerrer. So we're calling it Owen Zerrer, space down on first. Ledwick came up, slapped the ball hard out into left field. Frisch moved on down to second. Actually, he wants to circle it, and Bruce Goslin rammed it on in the third base. Collins came up without on that fly, but here is the Tigers at the first, and Tom Manning to give it to you. All right, Tom. Jojo White, left-hand hitter, center field of the Tigers, in his white uniform with the blue letters. He's up there, the first pitch from Dizzy Dean. Strike one, Paul, up burning, fast ball, so high, right down the old alley for Paul's strike. Dizzy Dean is out there, wearing that big smile, just as confident as he has been in his 30 victories in the past season. The wind-up, a long, lean wind-up, and here it is. A hook ball is low inside. Ball one and strike one. It's the last half of the first inning. It's old World Series ball game at Haven Field, Detroit. 
We're receiving the description through the National Broadcasting Company. Ball one is strike one, the pitch. Ball two, a fast ball. This is the outside corner of the plate. And the count on the left hand hitter, Jojo White, is ball two and strike one. He is the leadoff man of the Tigers. The last to catch it, and here's the pitch.
Scott couldn't bang one down to first. First stumbled, went down hard after the ball, but came up with it and wanged it over to Collins, and two men were out. Two out, nobody on. Geringer came up. Geringer got a hold of Leather and lifted it out on a drive into left field. A single over the shortstop head, and he was down on first. There he was on first with big Hank Greenberg. Hank Greenberg, a mighty man with a bat, up there to face Dizzy Dean. He drove one down to Martin. Martin took it prettily, slammed it over to Collins, and they were down four men up and three out for the Tigers in the first inning. No run, one hit, no error. And two big zeros hang out there on the scoreboard in right field. A zero for St. Louis and one for Detroit at the end of the first inning. Going into the second now, here is Delancey coming up the bat for the Tigers and Tom Manning to give you the second inning. All right, Tom. General Scarlett, that right hand veteran, is out there in the box to wind up the first six to Delancey. The left hand hitter. He hits the first ball, hits, hits a long poke to left field. Dark on his back near the barrier. Under it, he has it. That was a long drive about five feet from the barrier in deep left field. He's got the back up taking the ball. He then puts it over to Jojo White in center. Fights to Rogel, to Owen, to Carriger, to Green. And now General Carter again has the ball with his glove off, handling the ball with his bare hand. He gets a bit of bargain, and we're ready to go again. Orsatti, Ernie Orsatti, the center fielder of the St. Louis Cardinals of the National League is up. Hit the first ball, pitch, it's a hit in the left field. He was a left-hand batter, and he cracked the first ball, pitch, a line drive in the left field. The ball is received by Kuz Garza. He returns it to Rochelle at second. It's a single for Ernie Orsatti. That's the second hit of the afternoon for the Cardinals. And that brings Rio DeRosa up. Rio DeRosa, you know, back to right-handed. Here's a little shortstop of the St. Louis Cardinals. Carter is pitching and Cochran catching. Here's the first pitch. It's a strike call. General put that one in there. Let her high. Let her high, it's still Monday to say. Here's the next pitch to Rio DeRosa. All one. That was a hook ball. That was a little bit outside. And the count on DeRocher is ball one and strike one. In the second inning, one man out. As a peg over the first, nothing happens. Carter has the ball again in the box. Here's DeRocher batting. Ball one, strike one, the pitch. He swings. It's a poke high out of the center field. Jojo White backing up a bit. Under it, he's waiting. And he has it. Two men out in the first half of the second inning. The Cardinals batting. And we still have Orsani on first base. Now, Jerome Dizzy Dean is coming up. In the hotel lobby this morning, Will Rogers. He needs no introduction. Then how's the old arm, Dizzy? The well, it's okay, says the White don't want me to pitch, but golf gone when there's a ball game and any pitching to be done, I'm the pitcher. And there he is. He's in there pitching. And here's the first pitch to Dizzy. He swings at the foul back. Strike one. And with Dizzy Dean, uh, Will Rogers, how he was getting along, particularly over the rusher, he said, well, Dizzy, they had me play on the outfield. He said, I didn't do any pitching. But they had a great time together. That's two great fellows, Will Rogers and Dizzy Dean. All right, it's the last half of the second inning. You know, two men out. Both got on first. And the count on Dizzy Dean is strike one. Here's the pick. He swings at the bounding ball. Down there, second row. Carroll has it. Crosses to Geringer. And Geringer drops the ball, and everybody is safe. That was a ground ball, and Willie Rochelle walked it easy, went over to Carringer, and Carringer dropped the ball, and now we have runners on first and second. We've been delayed a moment while Dizzy Dean is putting on that great cargo runner. The fight was all right, and Charlie Carringer, the second baseman of the Tigers, is charged with Sam Heller. And now we have Orsatti on second. Dean on first. Two men out. And Pepper Martin. Pepper Martin, the star of the series of 31. Boy, would you ever forget what he did in that series. He stole bases. He hit home runs. He climbed up on the fence. He tried long drives. And here he is again. Pepper Martin is slowly getting into the box. He was in there, but Carter, Carter was ready to pitch, and he jumped out of the box quickly. And now ready to go again. Pepper Martin is up the first pitch. Oh, back. Right one. Pepper Martin wasn't kidding on that play. He let that bat go from way back that time. No scorers yet. The first half of the second inning. Australia is on second. Dizzy Dean is on first. And Pepper Martin is up with two out. Right one. General Carter, right-handed pitching. Captain catching. 
Here it comes. It's a foul back. Cover Mark with the bat clip out of his hand. And it flies through over to the boxes in back of home plate. Now we have strike two on Cover Mark. We have runners on first and second to know no score is yet in this first World Series ball game. The Maven Field, Detroit. Upper Mark is back in the box again now. Here it is. It's a bounding ball down third base. A big hop. Owen has it. Here's the throw. And the throw is by. And everybody is safe. The bags are over. Barber took that ball. He backed up on it. Then threw it wide to Hank Greenberg. Pulling Greenberg off the bag. And now we have the back loaders, as it were. And two men out. That is an error for third base for Owen. That is the third error of the afternoon for the Tigers. And here's the picture as you see it now. Ernie Orsatti is on third base. Dizzy Dean is on second base. Papa Mark is on first base. And we have two men out. Jack Rothrock is coming up. The last time up, Rothrock hit a fly ball to Jojo White in center field. He the left hand of the pitch. Ball run. Crowder's football with low inside. As we gaze around at the bullpen, nobody warming up as yet. It's the first half of the second inning. The Cardinals have the bag pulled the two men out. The wind up. And here it is. Strike call. That was a fast one. Felt high. And now the count on. Jack Rothrock is up there hitting it. All the bags loaded. Two men out. And the bags are loaded. Here it is. It's a drive in the center field. It's a base hit in the left center field. Corsani is coming in. Dean is rounding second. Third base coming in. The throw is to the infield. And Papa Martin goes to third base. Two runs score for the St. Louis Cardinals. Here's the picture again. The bags were loaded. Jack Walcott was up there. And he hit a line drive in the left center field. It was a single. And it takes Corsani across the plate. Also Dizzy Dean. Papa Martin went to third. Walcott dropped at first. And it is now St. Louis 2, Detroit nothing. Runners on first and third. Two men out. And manager Frankie Fisk coming up. Frankie tapped the left handed to know. With a right hand pitcher in the box. The pitch hits a foul. Strike one. That was certainly a smack by Jack Rothrock. The line drive into the left center field. For a moment it looks like extra bases. But Jojo White was over there. Took the ball on a, the second hop. And whipped it in there to Rogel holding Rothrock at first. Here's the pitch. It's a long foul upstairs. Right two on Frankie Fritz. First half of the second inning, you know, St. Louis Cardinals two. Detroit Tigers nothing. Frankie Fritz, the manager of the Cardinals, who stepped out of the batter's box for a moment. Knocked the dust off his shoes, and now he's back in there again with runners on first and third. Two men out. First half of the second inning. Crowder takes a stretch, and here's the pitch. It's too high outside. Ball one. With a count two and nothing, Crowder elected to try to get Fritz to swing at a high pass one outside. And now we have right two, ball one. Frankie Fritz was batting left hand of the afternoon against the right hand slant of Crowder. Runners on first and third. Two out. Here it is. He swings at the time ball. Challenger fumbles the ball. Retrieves it quickly. Cross the Greenberg. And pushes out at first base. That was a nice play by Charlie Gallagher. A ground ball between Challenger and Greenberg. Challenger coming over. Fired to his left. Knocked the ball down. Home of the former Charlie. Turned all the way around. And then cross the Greenberg. Getting first at first base. Come in for it. Ready happened that inning. Delancey came up. Banged the fly up. to left field. Dowson was right up against the wire. And took it. There was one gone. Or Fatty came up. Left one between the third baseman and shortstop into left field for a single. Then Bureker. Bureker next to that, a man on first, one out. And he left one out. It's Georgia White in center field. And two men were gone. Two out, a man on. Dean came up. Dean drove one down. Rogel covered just off second base. Talk to Derringer. Derringer made an error taking a throw for Rogel. And Orsatti would save a second. Martin at back. Two on, two out. A bounder down to third. And was save at first on Owen. Wyatt throw to first base. Rothrock came up. Lamp one out into the center field, scoring off Sally and Dean. Martin went to third. Rock Rock was on first. Frink was the next man in the batting order. He wrapped one down to Geringer. Geringer had a hard time handling. It was a bad ball to handle, but he got a hold of it. Picked up off the ground. 
got it over to Greenberg, and the batters retired. Two runs, two hits, two errors. Here is Ruth Johnson at bat in Detroit's half of the second and Tom Manning. The first pitch to Johnson, a change of pace, offering his high outside. Ruth Johnson, you know, is a left-hand hitter. Ball one. Dizzy Dean is in the box for the St. Louis Cardinals with Delancey behind the bat. Johnson is first up in the last half of the second. Here's the pitch. It's a strike, a nice hook ball that comes over just above the knees, and the count on Goose Goslin is ball one and strike one. Goslin is up, Rogel hanging around home plate. The pitch, it's a ball inside, and the count on Goslin, ball two and strike one. Goslin pulling away from that one, Dizzy Dean had plenty on it too. Dizzy Dean said that Jerome would not pitch this afternoon, but apparently Jerome won out. It's a high foul, almost up in the third deck behind home plate, and now the count on Goslin is two and two. Goslin leading off for the Tigers in the last half of the second inning. Goslin batting, and Billy Rogel will hit next. Two and two. Dizzy is taking a little more time at the moment. Now he's ready to go. There's a long wind-up, and here it is. It's a base hit in the left field. Benwick receives the ball, passes it in there. Two, he has the road to the second, and it's a one-base drop for two Goslin. Goslin took the hole of a high fastball inside and drove it to left field. It's a hard hit ball, and Joey Ludwig handled the ball very neatly out there in left field, returning it to DeRocher and holding Goslin at first. That's the second hit of the afternoon for the Tigers. Billy Rogel is up. You know, he's a twist hitter. He's after either left or right-handed. That's Billy Rogel. He's hitting left-handed this afternoon. Billy Rogel is up there, and the count is right one on Bill Rogel. There's the long lead wide up again of Dizzy Dean, the pitch. Strike swinging. Strike two. That ball is up around the peak of the cap. Billy Rogel right to those high ones, and he took the murderous cut at it and missed. Right two on Rogel. Last half of the second inning. St. Louis Cardinals, two. Tigers, nothing. Nobody out. Goslin is on first. Here's the pitch. It's a ball outside. Apparently that was a pitch out. With a count, strike two. Delancey sneaks the ball on the outside of that plate. And now the count on Billy Rogel. Ball two. Strike two and ball one. Ball going. Hanging around home plate. There's the stretch. The pitch. It's a ball outside. The count on Billy Rogel, who is batting left-handed is ball two and strike two. The last half of the second inning. The first game of the World Series. From Maven Field, he's going to the National Broadcasting Company. Two and two is the count. Great three! The throw to second, a double play! Goslin is out, and Frankie Fish was hurt on the play. Dizzy Dean, everybody is running out the second base. On that play, you know, two Goslin. Two Goslin was on first base. Goslin was off with the pitch. It was a call strike down Billy Rogel, and Gar then Delancey hooked the ball to Fish. Fish took the ball sitting in on second base. Goslin went in hard and knocked Frankie Fish down. And now all of the Cardinal players have left the bench. They're dashed out there at second base. The trainer is out there, and they're all bending over Frankie Fish. He got up and walked about 15 yards away from the second base cushion, and then again sat down on the ground, and as we observed him coming over towards first base, he was rubbing his left shoulder. We all sincerely hope that uh, nothing severe has happened to Frankie Fish. Uh-oh, Dizzy Dean is out there. Dizzy Dean is patting him on the back and saying something is funny and probably saying, come on, old kid, you can take it better than just Dizzy Dean. Who's Goslin went, went in there that time? Unintentionally, we are sure, but his knee was a little high. Frankie Fish was rather low to take that throw, and Who's Goslin's knee bumped into the shoulder and the next ball. 
Frankie Fritz. And now, as the players are going back to their position, Frankie Fritz is up, and he certainly can't take it. He's a great money player, and that game for the fifth ever one did win. That's the manager of the St. Louis Cardinals. He's up there now, waving his players to go back to their position, and he is rubbing the right side of his neck, near the shoulder. Actually, you know, was a double play. Galvin was out of second. Hotel was called out on strike. Two men out. Last half of the second. Nobody on. And Bob Owen, the great surprise player of the American League, the third baseman of the Tigers. They said he wasn't good enough for the American League at the swing training base. But he certainly has been a great third baseman for the Tigers. Strike one, foul. A foul on that particular play. Owen tries to duck away from a fast ball inside. The ball accidentally hit his bat, two in the below a deck of the stands, and of course it is strike two. That was a burning fast ball that Owen tried to duck away from. Two men out, nobody on. Strike two on Owen, a right-hand batter. Would he do take a little too long in shooting that ball straightward, and Owen steps out of the box. He's in again. He winds up strike two to pitch. He swings and misses, and that is all for the Detroit Tigers in the last half of the second inning. At the end of two innings, it is St. Louis Cardinals representing the National League 2. Detroit Tigers of the American League, seven, four. Three up and three down, and Goslin came up the goose. Uh, Goslin, the left fielder of the Tigers, drove the ball into left field, a pretty single, a clean ringing single. He was down on first, Rogel came up. Rogel came up, one on, nobody out. Now what up to three and two on him? Goslin trying to take a terrific lead off first. Dizzy Dean, five point one, then turned his attention to the batter. On the next pitch, Rogel struck out and Goslin was off like a flash for a second. Delancey fetched it down to Frisch. Goslin went in hard, and as you heard, Frisch was hurt. But there were two out, a strike out, and a man out of second trying to get down there on that third strike. Then Owen came to bat. Owen came up. And the first one was a call strike. The second, he tried to get out of the way. The ball hit his back, fouled off, and it was strike two. Then Dizzy took it. Dizzy took it, wound up, rammed it over the plate, and he swung hard, collecting a lot of air on the end of his bat for the third out. No run. One hit, no error. And here are the cards close up with Joey Medwick, Ducky Medwick, at bat in the first half of the third inning, and Tom Manning to give it to you with Slaughter taking his place in the box. All right, Tom. That's right, Ludwig, you know, is the boy who got the first hit in this Blue Ribbon event of 1934. His first time up, a beautiful face hit. And now he's coming up for the second time. Carter is in the box, you know, for the Tigers, the right-hand pitcher, Cochran Cassie. Ludwig up, and it's ball one. A base hit of the left field, his second hit of the afternoon. Dawson goes over fast, he sees the ball, puts it into work on second base. And Joey Ludwig stops it first. Two hits out of two trips to the plate. Nothing spooky about the base hits that we are having on either side this afternoon. They are ringing drives to the outfield. And now we have Collins coming up. Collins, you know, is the St. Louis Cardinal first base for the left-hand batter who has 35 home runs for the season. The pitch. It's a ball. The hook ball is high inside. It's the first half of the third inning, you know. St. Louis Cardinals to Detroit nothing. The starting pitchers are still in the ball game. Collins for Detroit. Dizzy Dean for St. Louis. There's the stretch. That was gone first. Nobody out. It's a foul. The ball comes off the umpire's chest protector and fouls very rapidly back out to General Crowder. Another count on Rip Collins. Ball one and strike one. Ball one, strike one. On Collins, the left hand batter. The pitch. He swings it to guard it out first. Greenberg takes it. Goes to a second. Out. It's the throw. He's in the third. And it's a wild throw. Back from Rochelle. And Collins goes to second base. And that play, Mavis was on first. Collins did a fly ball to Greenberg. Greenberg put the ball to Rochelle, forcing Redwick at second. Billy Rochelle then, in trying to complete the double play, two past Greenberg, and Collins went to second base. That, of course, will be scored as an error for Billy Rochelle, the shortstop. And now we have Collins on second base. One man out, and catcher Delancey, a left-hand batter is up. That was a made-to-order double play. Greenberg coming up nicely with that ball and throwing it to Rogel. That is the fourth error of the afternoon for the Tigers. Collins is out on second base in a scoring position. Delancey, the catcher, back to left-handed, is up in the first pitch. 
It's a ball. The hook ball is just a little bit high on the inside. Ball one on Zachary's Gillette. There's the stretch. Runner on second to go. One out. The pitch. It's a ball. The flat ball is too high. And the count on Delancey. See up, Ernie or Scotty, hanging around home plate. Charlie O'Loat is looking just a little bit slower now. Here's the pitch. It's the ground ball. Down first base. Greenberg fumbles the ball. And Gary Jimmy sees it. The ball is at the plate. And Collins continues on and beats the third. Scoring. That was a ground ball. But Collins on second base. It was a ground ball down first base play. Greenberg allowed the ball to trickle through his leg. Got it. Gary received the ball. And Collins ground the third base. Going at full speed. And stood in just the head of the throw. Scoring. That is scored as an error for Hank Greenberg, the Tiger first baseman. And the score now, the St. Louis Cardinals, three Detroit Tigers, seven. Manager Mike Cochran has taken off his chest protector and his cap and has walked out to the box. He's standing out there bareheaded. Bob Owen, the third baseman, has walked over to the pitcher's box. Hank Greenberg has also walked over for a conference with manager Mike Cochran. They're standing around there now, but General Crowder has walked out just a few paces behind the pitching rubber. Manager... Mr. Chaplin has been called quite word by Brick Owen. Brick Owen has raised his mask now, telling the boys to huddle up a little bit. The Chaplin walks out again toward the pitcher's box, and he says something to third base from Marv Owen and to first base from Hank Greenberg. Now Chaplin is going back behind the plate. Leo DeLocher, very gentleman, he has picked up Cochran's cap and chest protection, cap and mask, rather, and has handed it to him. Cochran puts them on, and now ready to go again. Carter stays in the box. Only Oscar is up. He hits the first ball, picks the foul down the left field line. The out there in the field boxes making a jump to get the ball, but two cars and runs over and receives the ball and throws it back into the diamond. Only Oscotti is up to know, and it is a foul strike one. St. Louis Cardinals three, Detroit nothing. First half of the third inning. Here's the pitch. Has it back out for it. Right field. It is out. Fox comes in fast to take the ball from high, throws it into Carrier, and now we have two men out. Two men out, and Leo DeRosa coming up. Leo DeRosa, you know, backs him right-handed. Here's the short shot for the St. Louis Cardinals. The last seed on first. Two out. DeRosa hits the first ball, hits the last he fly toward right field with Pete Fox coming over a little bit. He's under it, and he has it. That is all for the St. Louis Cardinals in the first half of the third inning. Come in for it. The Cardinals met wake up in the first half of the third. He ran one past third baseman, Marv Owen, for a single. He was on first. Collins did that. Collins grounded one hop down to Greenberg, who turned, winged it down to Rogel. As we got a second, Rogel off to Rogel back to first, and Collins went on down to second when the ball went back to Greenberg there on Rogel's error. The bad throw. And on second, Delancey up. Delancey drove one hop down to Greenberg. Greenberg got the ball tickled through his leg, and he was saved at first. Collins went on him, throwing, sliding into the home plate ahead of the throw, getting in there, and was called safe. Or Sadie then came up. And the fly out into right field where Pete Fox was under when it came down and two men were gone. The Rooster then came up, one on, two out. He left one out the same direction and Pete Fox had the third foot out. So the score is three to nothing. Two runs for the Cardinals in the second inning, one run in the third, three to nothing, and Detroit coming up with Pete Fox, Irvin Pete Fox, the right field who made those last two out. For the Tigers coming up first here in their half of the third. Here's the windup and the pitch. It's a high fly ball. Back of first base. Collins is back just right on the line. He takes it. One man out. Pete Fox with a count ball one and strike one. Set to a little pop fly back of first base. That's Rip Collins back up for. General Fowler is getting a nice hand from the fans here at Raven Field as he steps up to the plate. General Crowder, you know, back to left-handed. Here's the Tiger pitcher. Left-hand batter, last half of the third inning. One out and nobody on. 
Dizzy Dean slugged off lane. It's a call strike. A fast ball that was right down the old alley. Strick on. Umpiring behind the bat. Raises that right hand indicating a call strike. Call. Fast ball is low inside. Sauter stepping back away from the plate. And now the count is ball one and strike one. General Crowder completes the first round of the Tiger hitters. Here's the ninth batter of the afternoon for Detroit. Ball two. Fast ball is high inside of the count on pitcher Crowder. Ball two and strike one. Last half of the third inning. Tigers three runs behind. One out and nobody on. The pitch. Strike. Ball. That is a curve ball. Crowder pulled away from the plate. But the goal called to the strike and the count is two and two. Angel is Cardinal 3, Detroit Tigers nothing. It's the last half of the third, one out and nobody out. Jojo White hanging around home plate. The pitch. It's a high pounder, a top ball. Dean has it, tosses to Collins, and Crowder is out. Crowder swung hard at that ball, but topped it, and it was a high pounder about 15 feet high that Dizzy Dean waited for, and then tossed over to Collins. Now we have two men out. Nobody out. And Jojo White. Better feel of the Tigers coming up. Last time up, White pounded out the Rocher to column. Here's the first pitch to White. All on. Fast ball was inside. White pulled his back down as if to pump them, throwing Tupper Martin, the game carrying in fast. But of course it was a ball, and nothing further happened. Here's the wind up again. Dizzy Dean pitching. Here it is. It's a ball up and back. Ball one, strike one. Manager Mickey Cochran coming up next. Last pass, the third inning, two out, and nobody on. He winds up, and here it is. Ball two. Two and strike one. Again, Georgia White pulled up that end and hit the bunt. And once again, Papa Martin came carrying in. Martin goes back to his position. He the dirt out there in front of him. Here's the wind-up again. Two and one, the pit. A change of pace offering is a little bit high, and it's three and one on Jojo White. On that change of pace offering, it's Dizzy Dean. Dean to jerk that ball in there. There it is. Right two, Paul. Paul, that was bloody fast. Three and two. Jojo White, a left-hand batter is up. Last half of the third inning, two outs, nobody on. The pitch. Go ahead, he says. Ball four. That's the first pass of the afternoon. Dizzy Dean is backing his bare hand against his club. However, just a little bit of temperament on the part of Dizzy. He's up halfway in for it, home plate. Now he has his club out, pulling up his trousers. And as the Cardinal infielders come in to say, words of encouragement, he nods his head, holds up his bare hand, says, Fear not, my men, fear not. Mike Cochran, the manager of the Tigers, is coming up now. Mike, you know, is a left-hand hitter. We delayed a moment. Delancey, Cochran, and Rick Owen. They're talking something over there. Now ready to go again. Jojo White is on first. Two men out. Cochran, the left-hand batter, is up. Dean is back on the rubber. A long strip. Here's the pitch. Ball on. A fast ball. Cochran must be a dancer. Old Bill Robinson never had a better foot step than that one for him. Is he Dean? He's a big one. It's a base hit. A base hit to left field. Very nice. He sees the ball. Picks it into third base. Jojo White stops at second. That is really the first chance this afternoon in this World Series. Detroit Tigers have had a real chance to let loose, and boy, the 45,000 and upward fans here at Raven Field certainly cut loose when Mickey Cochran called that ball into left field. Now we have runners on first and second. Charlie Gellinger is up, a left-hand batter. The pitch, straight one, ball. Seeks over the back of Mike Cochran, but Cy Perkins, who was coaching at first, doesn't permit a 
Clay yells at Cochran, and Cochran is back fast. Here's the pitch to Gellinger. It's a cry ball. Strike! 
probably have a long, comfortable winter in somebody's stuff as well. Two and two. Here it is. Gazzle hitting. Hit the ball too high. Gazzle was all set to take the whale at that one. But it was a little bit too high, and now the count is three and two. Ball three and strike two, the last half of the fourth inning. St. Louis to the National League three. The Tigers of the American League one. Dean winds up. And the ground ball. Play right pop to Frankie Fish. Fish to Collins. Gazzle is out. One down. Frankie Fish is all set for that one, took the ball on a right, third hop, felt high, and crossed it over very gently to Rip Collins at first. Now we have one man out, and Billy Rogel, the veteran shortstop of the Tigers. Left hand hitter is up. He just switched hitter, back to left or right hander. All on. After Dizzy Dean let that ball go, he yelled, oh golly. Well, it's a gentleman, anyway. Rogel is a ball on the pitch. The high fly, out the short left center field. Joey Ludwig coming in. The gentleman and has it. Ludwig came in from left field, heavy short, left center, and took that high fly on Billy Rogel. Two men out. Nobody on. Last half of the fourth inning. Bob Owen is up. Last time up, Owen struck out. He got the right-hander. Hit the first ball, takes the high fly, short right field. Fritz backing up. Now coming in, almost the collision, but Fritz gets over the ball and takes it. Rock Rock, who was a fast runner, came in fast after that. Collins and Fritz were backing up, but finally Fritz took the ball. And Jack, Rock Rock, whirled around on his feet and barely avoided a collision. That's all for the Tigers in the fourth inning. No run, no hit, no error. Four. Tom, the goose came up there, and the goose was batting J.G., and so was his team pitching to him the same way. The count ran up to three and two, and he banged one down to Frankie Brace, who took it, made a nice toss over to Collins, and the goose retired to the dugout. One out in the fourth for the Tigers. The score three to one against them. Rogel came up to bat next. Rogel, the shortstop for the Tigers. He banged the fly into short left center. Medwick came in very fast, and the ducky boy was under it for the outmission. A pretty catch coming in fast and hard from his position. Two men gone, and Marv Owen, the third sacker for the Tigers, was at that. He drove a fly into short right, and Frankie Frisch went up, stopped very fast in position. Ross Rock was coming in, it looked for a moment if they were going to stumble. Frisch did lose his cap on that, he went out after it, and was under it for the third out, retiring the side. One, two, three, Goslin, Rogel, and Owen. No run, no hit, no errors, and we go into the fifth inning with the St. Louis Cardinals leading over the Detroit Tigers. Three, two, one. Tom Manning, come in here. Here is the Cardinals up at bat with Frankie Frisch, the first man up there. Here you are, Tom. Frankie Frisch, you know, is a left-hand batter, Crowder, and Cochran for the Tiger battery. A slight call. That was a nice fast ball over the inside corner on Frankie Frisch. The pitch swings. It's a long drive to right field. Fox is going back to the barrier, and he is under it and has it. That ball was just about three feet from the barrier in deep right field. One man out. Now we have Joey Ledwick coming up. Ledwick, you know, is also a long distance hitter. Joe has some tape around his right wrist this afternoon. First pitch to Ledwick, a ball up and back, right. Joey Ledwick has two hits out of two trips to the plate. Two out of two. Half of the fifth inning, three to one in favor of the Cardinals. The pitch hits the ball. The third ball is high inside, and the count on Joey Medrick is ball one and strike one. First half of the fifth inning, one out, and nobody out. The pitch, the long drive deep into left center field, back, back, going, 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 high into the preachers, out in left field, and it is a home run for Joey Medrick, the little left field of the St. Louis Cardinals. Gosnell was off with a crack of the bat, but there seemed to be no doubt in his mind. He ran out the steam barrier in left field, but the ball was over the fence for a home run. And now it is 4-1 in favor of St. Louis. Here it is. 4-1. That was a 
Don't quite sure remember to come out. We have Collins up. That's the first extra base match of the series. Strike ball. Ball one, strike one. Collins and Earl is also a home run hitter, having hit 35 this year. Hook ball is out, outside, and it's ball two and strike one. General Sauer, you know, is in the box for Detroit. Ball two and strike one. Collins is up. One out, and nobody on. Here it is. Strike. Swinging. What a cut he took at that one. Wheeled all the way around. Another count is ball two and strike two. Catcher, Delancey, hanging around home plate. It's a foul back. The count remains two and two. First half of the fifth inning, St. Louis Cardinals of the National League, four. Tigers of the American League, one. Slatter in the box for the Tigers, Cochran behind the bat. Collins up two and two, the pitch. Change of space ball is outside, and the count is three and two on Collins. Three and two, one out, and nobody out. Here it is. Ball four. He left. That was a fast ball inside, and it was plenty high. Mike Cochran has just pointed over toward the Tiger dugout now. Perhaps wants someone to go down to warm up. No one has come out of there yet. Well, we have Delancey, the catcher, coming up. Delancey is a left-hand batter. Strike. Ball. Probably had a curve ball over the heart of the plate that time. Now we have Collins on first, you know. One man out. And Delancey, the catcher, is up. There's a high fly out to center field. Jojo White coming in a few places under it, and he has it. Two men out. Collins is on first. Tony Orsatti coming up. Orsatti, you know, the center field of the Cardinals to the left-hand battle. Ready to go, you know, two men out. Collins is on. And the pitch hits the call strike. General Crowder sent that one over the inside corner. Son, come out now. First he's had since the game started. Hit the ball. Last ball was too high. And the count, ball one, strike one. Tony Orsatti is up there, a left-hand batter. Two men out, first half of the fifth inning. Cardinals, four. Tigers, one. The trip. It is. The King. And it's a base hit in the left field. Collins was off with a crack of that bat, but 2,000 retrieves the ball, whips it into Billy Roquel, and Collins is held at second base. That's the second hit of the afternoon for Ernie Horsati. Base hit, wide to center, and now he has singled again. Two hits out of three times up. That brings Rio de Rocha up. Cardinal shortstop, a right-hand runner. Put up twice before, both times hitting fly balls to Fox, to White and center field. Here's the pitch. Ball one. The third ball was inside. First half of the fifth inning. Two out. Runners on first and second. Collins on second, or Sally on first. The road up the pitch. The high fly out for center field. Jojo White moving over into left center is under it, and he has it. And it's all for the Cardinals in the first half of the fifth inning. And here is what happened. Frankie Frink was first up. He had a fly ball to box in left field. Joey Mudley got a hold of a fast one and parked it about ten rows up into a left field bleacher. A fine souvenir for somebody. Collins, with a count three and two, he walked. Delancey, fly it out to White in center field. Ernie O'Connor got his second hit of the afternoon. A single to left. Collins is held at second base. DeRocher then hit a fly ball to center field, retiring the side. One run, two hits, one base on balls, and no error. And so we win the last half of the fifth inning. The St. Louis Cardinals four, Detroit Tigers one. Radio friends, this first game of the World Series is being sent to you from the cut box at Naven Field. 
We're up in the third balcony, and this is Tom Manning speaking. We've had the pleasure of describing the play-by-play of the first four and a half innings, and it is a real pleasure now, too, that we turn the microphone over to a fourth bond of New York who will give you the play-by-play description of the remaining innings of this ball game. With pleasure, fourth bond. Thank you, Tom. Bill Dean's been warming up to the down here. Now here's Pete Fox, the right fielder of the Tigers in there, swinging his bat. He's winding up. There's a pitch. It's to Jimmy. Swings hard, and it's one strike on the batter. One strike on Pete Fox right here in the last after fifth inning. It's go four to one against the Tigers. Pete Fox is up there. He's winding up. He shoots it in, and he drives one high up, fly out into short right Frank Frisch, and Collins will pull it back, and he goes out. Collins takes it just outside the foul line, and there's one gone. Straight and Collins and Ross Rock were all coming after that ball. They were sure that one of them was going to get it, and Collins got the white top line out there many yards behind first base for the out. And there's one out, and General Alvin Carter, the next man, drew up the plate. He's made no appearance down there at the moment. Delancey and Brick Owens are both looking over towards the Tigers' dugout to see where Mr. Carter is. One gone. There's one gone here in the last half of the fifth. Finally, Carter comes out, swinging a couple of bats with his right arm. Now he's seen the motor his left and swings it over his shoulder. I believe we're going to have a... Joel Jack. Joel Jack is coming in to bat for General Carter. That means we'll have a new pitcher. Joel Jack is taking the place of Carter. He's an outfielder. I think we can drop in the minor league. He's going to bat for Trotter here. He's coming up there now. That was what the wait was for. Joel Jack taking his place at the plate now. And Dean with the both arms hanging down to his side. He's looking at the signal. He finally goes up, winds up, shoots it in. And it's a ball. Low to the outside to a right-handed batter. Joel Jack picks up his Trotter. Takes over his bat again. Here's the pitch. And it's a ball sight. Rick Owens runs up his hand and says it's a strike, Mr. Dozak. And it's one and one on Frank Dozak. He's come in here to bat for Trout. Here's the pitch. He winds up. Shoots it in. And it's a drive deep out into center field. Ross that he's waiting that it is. And he has it as Ross Rock runs over. Gets there just about the same time the ball dives. Or that he has it. And his two men are gone. Dozak batted for Trout. Which brings Johnny Joyner White. Jojo White. Center fielder of the Detroit Tigers up the bat. He's out there now. Knocking the dirt out of the field cleat. Goes over. Hits his bat. A big black willow down on the home plate. Looks out toward Jimmy Dean. Brings his bat flying it out just a bit. Jimmy Dean takes the ball. Takes that line up of his. Shoots it down across the plate. And it was, wasn't quite across the plate. He was outside to a left-handed batter. And it's a ball. Ball one on Jojo White. Again, he cracks down on the rubber. Brings his bat up. Here's the pitch. Going inside, and it's ball two. Ball two. Joiner White at bat. His team gets the ball back to Mr. Delancey. Infield is sticking dirt around out here while his team looks into Delancey taking the signal from him. Takes his head. Yes, that's all right. Winds up, and it's strike two. Strike one, ball two. Ball two and strike one. A ball strike on Joiner White. Jojo White. Here's the pick. He winds up. And it's three balls. Three and one. Joyner White and his feet walked in. Going he's a little bit put out about that third ball. Three and one is the count on the batter. And here comes the whole Cardinal infield in the draft doing. First, Andrew Frankie Trace and Leo DeRocher walked in. They're battled now by Rick Pallet and Kevin Mackey. Here turns around, got the final lead to Rip Fallon. The other was going back to their places. And Rip turns around, got out to his place. Off first base there, turns his attention again to the batter. Down three and one. Two out. And he gets a left. Well, left outside and wide. Joiner White down on first base. Two men out. And Gordon Stanley, Mickey Cochran. The manager and the captain, back left and throws right. He's up there at the plate with one on, two out. Here in the last half of the fifth, he's four to one against his team. Mickey Cochran's up there at the plate. He doesn't matter about hitting love the time being. He looks over what comes in, and it's a call. Wow. A little high. That's 
set it left high, and it's a pass on Mickey Thompson. Joiner White down on third. That's the picture in the last half of the fifth inning. Four to one, David the pass. Here's the pick. It wheels over, and it's the cloud strike. One and one. It wheels right over the heart of the plate. He comes right down the alley, and Mickey wasn't looking for out there. And it's a cloud strike. One and one. Two men down, going to White on first. He takes a little lead off. Good look at him over his shoulder. But puts it in. And South went down the right field, but it went foul. That wind seemed to catch it and shoot it over. It's a long fight into the right field bench. And it curved him down there almost out of the fence. It was a hard hit ball. And Joyner White comes back, starting diagonal across the ground to his place at first base. And Mickey again stepped into the batter's box. It's one and two. One and two. That's the long strike. Mickey steps up there again. He's back dressing on his shoulder. Looking hard down at Jerry Dean. Takes a couple of swings. Dean has his shoulder now turned to the plate. Dancing just a little bit over Joyner right. He's taking his lead off there. He shoots it down, and Mickey swings at it. Drives it down where Frank takes it. Shoots it over to Collins. And there's a man down on second, and there's nobody down there. Now it's three out, and they retire. And the Cardinals come in the bat, and here's Tom Hanks. Tell you what happened that inning. He popped his first up in the final half of the fifth, and he fouled off to the Collins. Collins had to go quite a ways back for that one. Full shot. And with center to pass for General Carter. With the cop ball on the first one, he tried deep to Ernie Orcati. Orcati came over nice in the right center to the first shot drive. Georgia White came up, and after getting a crowd of three and one, he left. Georgia Mike Cochran gave the fans a bit of a thrill, and he got a hold of one of two bathrooms and drove it deep into right field. He ran sort of flat out there until they hit the far line in the extreme corner. The ball was then for a foul. Cochran then started out six to foul. No one, no hit, one base on balls, no error. Looks as off for by Marbury will be the next pitcher that is not official. However, up to now, at the end of five innings, here is a summary of what the pitchers have done so far. Dizzy Dean has allowed the Tigers one run, four hits, and the Tigers have done the recipients of two bases on ball. Carter allowed four runs, six hits, and this is one base on ball. The only extra base hit of the afternoon is that long, long run into the left field pitches by Roy Nugget. There is no question now. Triple Barbary. We all remember that grand gentleman of baseball, Barbary. For several years, during the penetrating days of the Washington Brothers of the American League, times without number, he came in from deep into the bullpen to save one of his comrades who are traveling in the pitcher's box. Once again, he is in that role, really cold, as they call it, here in the first game of the World Series. Football Marbury, that big husky right-hander, formerly of Washington, now the Detroit Tigers, is to take up the pitcher. He's a right-hander, and the first half of the sixth inning has four bombs. Marbury in there, just in back, just over an offering, and it's inside off the plate corner, inside corner to a right-handed batter, and it's one ball on Dean, who incidentally bat to bat at 246 during the season. Marbury winds up, here's a pitch, and he swings hard, and it's one and one on a swing at the offering of Purple Marbury. We come in there to relieve his summer crowd, who's taken out for a hitter. Swings it in, and he drives one as a single out the deep between the center fielder and the left fielder. It's, oh, oh, it's good for two things he went in there. It looked like a single, looked like the fielder would get over after it, but Dean gets a two-base hit, and he's down on second. Nobody out, and Pepper Martin coming up to the plate to face the new Tiger pitcher. The umpire has all time for the moment, waving his arms, and the trainer runs out the dugout with the big cardinal windbreaker for two teams he's just gotten that nice two bagger he's going it hard between right and Bruce Goslin out there in deep left center looks like they got a hold of it shooted in and Dean traveled on down to second before anything could be done about it a two base hit for him and the next man you up is John L. Martin 
That to give you those names. He's mostly called back. We have to find out what the man's real name is. He came to the Cosmos to Houston for him in 1928. He's gone back for a time, but in 31 he came back, landed a regular job on the regular World Series. You remember the story? He's up there at bat now. He's covered on second. Nobody out here in the first half of the inning. He swings hard at the first offering, and it's one strike. He collected with a lot of air on the end of his bat there. There's one strike on Pepper Martin, of course. Four to one in favor of St. Louis here in the first half of the sixth inning. Did he beam down on second? Takes a little lead off. Marbury turns around, looks down at him. Turns his head to the batter, and he drives one hot over second base out into center field. Piper sees it. His beam comes on him. The throw him is from right to Marbury, who got over to second base. It's the throw in there. Now, now Marbury drops in, talking to Mickey Cochran. Captain Martin is down there on first. His team came in with a run on his single out there. Right to see the set it in. Now Marbury taking place back in the back. Cochran has put his cap back on and he's getting ready to adjust his mask. And we're looking for Jack Rathlap. Jack Rathlap to come to bat. And on first, nobody out. Run in. In the first half of the sixth inning, 4-4 to 1 in favor of the St. Louis Cardinals. He gets up there now into the batter's box, and he punched one down there third. The pitcher was seen, he shoots it over to first, and he's out. The man going down on a nice back to bite, man down on second. Got the marshal. Rob Black, back to bite, and he's down with down. 5 to 1 on the home run in favor of the Cardinals. To one in favor of the Cardinals. Last homer in the fifth, and this drive in here in the sixth is five to one, and we have Frank Gray, the manager and second baseman at the plate with Pepper Martin down on second, one out. Pitch and a strike on Mr. Frey. Strike one. He's up there again. Now Marbury has it up there. He looks around at Martin on second. A pop, pop, pop in to way out off the foul line in left field. The third baseman goes back to the and he's under it. On making a sweep hard of a catch after he went back fast. Lost his cap in the process. Peter came back in, and the crowd gives him a nice hand for a beautiful catch going out fast under that pop-up, pop foul of Frankie Drake. Out there, way back of third, over towards the left field, Grand Sam. A beautiful catch by my boy. So now, it's two out. Man on second, Pepper Martin, and Joey Medwick. Joey Medwick, you up at bat, who is in the present time to get up there to the home plate, to any pitcher at any time. But Justin is a man on second. Here's Joey Ducky Medwick at bat, swing that ball, he bats right. He swings hard and falls the ground. He swung so hard at that offering of Marbury, who takes it out nonchalantly. Jim goes back, walks around the pitcher's mound, rubbing the ball and looking at Pepper Martin down on second. Five to one in favor of the cards here in the first half of the sixth inning. Here's the offering. He fouls it back high into the upper tier back of home plate. New ball is given by Vic Owen to Cochran, who throws into Marbury and Purple is what, wiping it off out there, getting it in the condition that he likes to pitch it. Has a big number 11 written on the back of that pretty white tiger uniform. He comes in, walks in, throws the rubber, looks around at Pepper Martin on second, he's taking a big lead, wind up, shoots it across a slow ball, a nice change of pace. It came in, but it was wide, and it's called ball one. One and two is the count on Joe Ducky Medwick. And on second base, two out, four five to one favor of the card. Marbury's watching Martin back, turns around, shoots it in, but it was low, and it's ball two. Low and wide of the plate to a right-handed batter. Marbury gets the ball back, drops his, his glove down onto his wrist, has him hanging there by the strap. Wipes the ball off, comes in, looks both ways, throws it over his right foot, looks back at Martin, and makes an offering to swing uh, just for the instant if he would, but nothing's happened about it. And Martin wasn't alarmed, nobody was coming in there to the second base. And he knew all about it, he turns his head to the batter, shoots it in, and it's again, it's a high foul. Nicky Tucker knocks his mask off, and just goes into the stand, he can't get it. So another ball comes into the ball game, Marbury has it. He's having to wipe off a lot of balls out here to get him into the condition. He likes to pick them. And Marbury looks around there at Martin again, who's gone back to the second track there, standing on it. 
Either Bill Rogel, or Charlie Gerringer are paying any attention to it. And they're watching to see what Joe Medwick does down there. He swings, hard drives a liner into right field. It's a Hopman and the runner comes in. Pepper Martin crosses the plate on the throw in ahead of the throw in. He did in. It wasn't that he could have gotten it. The ball failed out the box into the another run in. Now six to one on the single. It's Joe Medwick throws into right field. A line drive out there with hit short of what anything that Pete Fox could do about it. And there are two runs in this inning. Now, Medwick is down on first. Two out, two runs in. And James Rip Collins. James Rip Collins with the Cardinals. First baseman at bat, always a dangerous man. Thomas told you a couple of times this afternoon that he has hit 35 homers during this 1934 season. Here's the pitch, it wings in, and it's a ball, ball one. Wire to the plate to a left-handed batter, outside. Just Collins up there, Edwick down on first. He starts down for second, as they hit nice hit and run. Drives it hard on the ground, out into right field. And he's safe on first, and Medwick is safe on third. He slid in there, he was way ahead of it, wasn't necessary, but he hit the dirt anyhow. And there's a man on first and third, two out, and two runs in on Rip Collins' single. He was off with the pick. Nice hit and run, and they worked it, getting hold of that ball and driving that into right. The umpire down on second base. Umpire Geisel throws his arms into the air, and there's a time here for the moment. All the players now, with the exception of Hank Greenberg and Charlie Garrett, have walked in to talk to Fred Marbury, and he's leaving the mound. He's leaving the mound, and we'll have another Detroit pitcher here. No one out on the warm-up mound, but here comes a pitcher running in. We can't see who it is. He just came down the runway. And just see who it is. Walking in with a big windbreaker. Guy taking off now. Throwing it down to the bat boy. To tell you who it is, just a moment, who's going to replace Marbury there in the box here in the sixth inning with a score six to one against some of his first ball games here at Maven Field of the 1934 World Series. It looks like the Baker, but we can't identify him for the moment. My first here high. Elon Hodgson, the Indian, has come in. Elon Chester Hodgson, the left-handed pitcher, has come in to replace Marbury here in the sixth inning. Hodgson replacing Marbury in the sixth inning with a score six to one against them. Six to one in favor of the Cardinals. Jeff Collins is on first. Joey Medwick on third. Two out. And two runs in here in this inning. Hard pass to Dick Kidding, the first up. Hodgson goes over and takes hold of the rosin bag. Wipes his hands off on it. Turns around and tosses one over to Greenberg for another set of warm-ups. And he turns his attention to the batter, who is William Delancey, catcher of the Cardinals. He swings hard, drives it way out, high into left field, over to his head. It's down against the fence. It's good for two bases, and he scores the runners. He's now held at second on the throw-in, and both Hedwig and Rip Collins come in on that two-bagger of Phil Delancey. A hard drive over Goose's head. So now it's eight to one in favor of the St. Louis Cardinals here in the first half, the beginning of the first ball game of the 1934 World Series. Ernie Orsatti falls into the plate. He's up there already taking position in the batter's box. Elon Hodgson Finally gets the ball back. Wipes his hands off on the rising bag. They hold the ball again. Bill Delancey down on second. Two out. Four runs in this inning. Swings and here's the pitch. And it's a call strike. Right straight over and a 31 but Our fatty was looking for that shine right here at the moment. And the ball goes back to Mickey Cotter to the pitcher. Winds up. Shoots it in. He swings hard. That is the grounder down to the second base. Charlie Gerringer. He's out at first. Gerringer to Greenberg. Out at first, 
Mattinger here to the first four runs in that inning. And here's Tom Matting to tell you a resume of how those four runs happened. All right, Tom. Boy, that was really an inning. Dizzy Dean was first up after he was dragged for missing one by the crowd. He just took it off and then got a hold of one and doubled the left field. Pepper Martin singled the center. And Dean scored. He almost missed that third base tag over there. Bob Owen and umpire Reardon had a bit of a conference. And the umpire thought that that size nine two or better of Dizzy Dean had just licked the cushion. Slot Rock made down a sacrifice. Marbury to Greenberg. Flick fouled out to Owen. This was the, the outstanding feeling play of the day. A great running catch, almost 40 yards from third base to Bob Owen. The Tiger third tracker went to get him. Joey Ludwig then came up with a count two and two. He singled to right field, scoring Copper Martin. That was Ludwig's fourth hit of the afternoon. Three singles and a homer. A great day's work for anybody. Collins then gave perfect execution of the hit and run play. Singles to right field. Ludwig went to third. Offset replaced Blarberry. A left-hander. Delancey doubled against the barrier in deep left field. High over Garfield's head. Ledwick and Collins score. That was fine splitting on the part of Collins. Makes it 8-1. to one. Orzotti then bounded out. Geringer to Greenberg. So, at the end of five and a half innings, the St. Louis Cardinals of the National League. Eight. Detroit Tigers of the American one. The last half of the fifth and fourth ball. The last half of the sixth, I'm just to correct you on a number there for the moment. We have Charlie Geringer up at the plate for the Tigers here in the last half of the sixth. Here's Dean is looking him over. Here's the pitch, and it's a strike. Geringer down there at the plate, hoping to do something here. They're trailing by 8-1 as they go into the last half of the sixth. Geringer first man up here for the Tigers in this half of the inning, and the ball sails over, and it's strike two. Strike two. Lancy waves the signal down to Dizzy Dean, walks out, holds up his hand, signals him what the umpire has called it, confirming it so that Dizzy will know exactly where he is in relation to the batter. He winds up, shoots it in, and it's a low one, and a ball. A ball on the batter. Winds up and gets another one in, and ball two, and strike two. Two and two on Mr. Charlie Geringer there. Dizzy Dean winds up, shoots it in, he whams it down to first base. First baseman, and he tosses it over to the pitcher. Dean coming over to rip out, rip out, knocks the ball down, picks it up, and Dean coming over fast, hits the cross on him, got there just barely ahead of Charlie Geringer, who is plenty fast on those pins of his, and there's one gone. That's always a beautiful play on the ball, and when the ball drives down to the first baseman, the pitcher comes over, crosses the plate, taking the throw from the first baseman who has gotten it from the batter. It's always a pretty one when it's executed right. And it was a, had to be executed fast then because he was a hot drive which he knocked down. Here's Hank Greenberg up at bat. Here's a pitch. The drive over second base, a line drive, and the old base has that he had it. He shoots out the hot plate. The ball down back. It shoots it in to second base, and he has the second. It scores as a hit and an error. A hit and an error. He came in fast for that ball, awfully hard. It bounded up just about a yard in front when he was trying awfully hard to get it. Hit him in the chest, bounded off the edge, it. And Hope Greenberg is down on second on a hit and an error on center field, Ernie Orsatti. Hank Greenberg is on second. One out. And Ruth Goslin, Leon Allen, Ruth Goslin, left fielder of the Tigers at bat. He bats left, bats left-handed, but throws right, you know. Here's the pitch, and he swings hard, goes clear down on one knee, turns clear around. If he'd gotten a hold of that lid, he would have gone places. He gave it all the half that he has, and believe me, Ruth had plenty of that. We were talking to him last night, and he was talking about what big things he hopes to do in the series. All of them want to do that. They're hopes, and he swings hard again and misses the ball, but he's nothing but a lot of air on the end of his bat for his trouble. Ruth and all the boys on these two teams, great fellows, and anxious and hopeful for what they can all do in the series. Hank Greenberg on second, one out, strike two on the batter, Bruce Goslin in the batter's box. Dean again takes that lady stance, takes the wriggle from Delancey, makes the stretch, winds the hand, it shoots in, and a little easy one down, it gets the Dean, the short stop and third baseman, and Hank Greenberg comes in and scores, either one up to get to it, and it's a single for Bruce Goslin. Both of them bad hard folks. Leo DeRocher and Pepper Martin, both of them trying to get to that ball, but it's just Jim Costner. A hit for Goose, scoring, and Dean Kerr's in second, and that makes the score 8-2 to two here in the last half of the pitch in favor of the St. Louis Cardinals. 
William Rogel, Rogel. Billy Rogel is at bat next. Wears the big number seven on his back. The white tiger uniform. Garden is in their old uniform. The light gray with the red figures. The Cardinals. Here's the pitch to Rogel, man on first. And he drives one, hot down to the second basin. First, shoots it over to first. The man is out. There was no time to make a double on that. He's just barely had time to get that ball and get it over Rip Collins to get the man out. That first is two gone with Goose Sovereign down on second, and they run in. Two men out, score 8-2 in favor of the Cardinals. Just time for Chris to get that one over to Collins to get Joe Rogel out. So we have Marvin Owen. Marvin Owen, who this year is at 321. He's driven in 88 runs. He's been doing a lot of good batting during the season. He's up there at the plate now. He's back right. Also, he's got to have a runner to pick. Then it's a ball on Mr. Marvin James Owen, the third chapter of the Tigers. And on second, two out. Ball one on the batter. It has a signal. He winds up. as a catch in the pitch. And it comes over, and it's a ball tight. Umpire Brick Owen does that right hand up and out in the gesture of the strike. It's one and one on the batter. Marvin Owen in the batter's box. And on second base. He's got one. Here's the pitch. He swings hard, but gets nothing for his trouble, and it's one and two. Ball one and strike two on the batter. Two out. One run in. Eight two favor the Cardinals. Here's Dean again looks in. He has a very lazy chance to that signal and winds up, makes the stretch, and it's a foul. Back of the plate, looping in to the first tier. Delancey walks. About eight or nine feet in front of the home plate. Boy delivers the ball back to their team. Who draws him down second, taking a lead of about five yards off the base. Looking around to see if anybody's paying any attention to him. He views that short top of second base and getting after him. A swing, a hard swing. And there's at the batter, Fool, striking out Marvin Owen. And the side is retired. The score, eight to two in favor of the Cardinals. The end of the sixth inning. Here's Tom Manning to give you a resume at the Tigers half the sixth. Tiger half of the sixth. One run, two hits, and no run. One error, rather. One run, two hits, one error. Garringer, about Carlos Speed. Greenberg, single. He took second. On Osadi, error. Osadi tried to shoot swing catch then, and he was given an error. Goslin, single to left field, scoring Greenberg, making it eight and two. Ogell, is out, flicks to Collins. Goslin went to second. Bob Owen, struck out. So at the end of six innings, St. Louis Cardinals, eight. Detroit of the American League, two. You know, folks, the Ford Motor Company, folks, at the crowds that are listening in, at the showrooms of Ford dealers throughout the United States and Canada, as well as everywhere else, are enjoying this game. It is coming to you from Maven Field, Detroit, the first game of the Blue Ribbon Classic of 1934. The first two games here at Maven Field, in Detroit, and the next three, if necessary, in St. Louis. Going into the first half of the stretch inning, and here is Paul Bond. Elon Hodgson, who leaves Marbury, who had previously taken Crowder's place after Crowder was pulled out for a consider. Hodgson is taking place in the box, and the Cardinals are up with Leo DeRocha, the shortstop. First man up there in the seventh inning to start of that. He's at bat, taking place in the box. There's the pitch, and it sails in and is called the ball. It's wide to a right-handed batter, wide outside of the plate. He got and shoots it back out to Elon. He takes it, winds up, here's the pitch, and he drives one down to the shortstop. Look, leaping the air, pull it down. Rogel takes it over to Greenberg, and the man is out. That ball took a bad down, and Phil Rogel gets a nice hand from the fans for leaping in the air, clearing that ball after it made a bad down. Man is out at first. Rogel retires to the dugout, and here it comes. Jerome takes Dizzy Dean up to the plate. Just 23 years old, and the amazement of the Major League. This man, Dean, who won 30 games, lost seven in this past season. He comes up there, takes his place in the box. Elon Hodges turns his attention. He has his hand behind, both hands behind his back. The time before, he assumed he can get taking the signal from Potter. He winds up. Here's the pitch. Then swings hard and goes down on one knee. He put all the heft he had into that one. One strike on the batter, swinging. Ken Hogs winds up, comes down the alley, he fouls this one off, and it goes clear high over the whole stand. And this is a high stand here in Detroit at Maven Field. Fouls it clear up over the stand. He's back down there again with strike two on him. Hogs is rubbing off the ball now after drying off his hands on the rosin bag. 
Left-hander, you know, out ball, swings the fourth drive, winds up, drives it in, and he swings wide at that one, and he has struck out Dizzy B. Two men gone here in the first half of the seventh. He retires the dugout, which brings John L. Pepper Martin up to the plate. Pepper Martin, lead-off man, first batch of the Cardinals. Next man up. So far to Rocher and Dean have been up there and both out. And Martin is the third man up for this inning. Two out, nobody on. The score eight, two favor the Cardinals. Here's the pick. And it's wide, forcing him back on his knees. The batter forcing Martin back on his knees is a ball. Very wide. This man Hodge it steps out wide. Swings, round arm. Shoots the ball in. And he tried to bunt it. But he fouled it off. Hit down there around Mickey Coxon's foot. And it's one and one. Pepper Martin. Pepper Martin goes off, sweats his hands, rubs him down on the dirt, takes hold of the bat, off his shoe, almost like Lefty O'Doul does for the moment. Steps back into the batting box, here's the pitch. Stays in and he drives it, hops down to the shortstop. Phil Rogel plants it over to Greenberg, retiring the side. One, two, three, three up, and three down for the cause of the seventh day lead. Eight to two, here's Tom Manning, tell you how that happened. Boy, we certainly watched two great plays that time. We told you about five on play. Billy Rogel, the veteran shortstop of the Tigers, just turned in two brilliant plays. On the motion, the first man up. Get up. Ground ball down short. The ball hit something and took a nasty ball. Rogel leaped into the air, turned halfway around. Came down and whipped that ball over just ahead of the speeding to Rocha. For a 12 play. Dizzy Dean, then very nonchalantly, took his exercises three strikes. Dizzy doesn't do that very often. And the pitch is when he's tough. But then he just went up there and swung and struck out. Two balls. Pepper Martin, then hit a back down between the shortstop position and the second base bag. Rogel went over, came up with that ball, a hard smash, and caught the field. No run, no hit, and no error. Dolly up for that old seventh inning stretch. Have your stretch either way. Take the stretch between the first half and the last half of the seventh, when we are in either part. So, if you're rooting for the Cardinals, go ahead and stretch. If you're rooting for the Tigers, go ahead and stretch. The last half of the seventh, busy team sits again here at four. He box his back. Ball comes sailing in as the call strike right dead over the heart of the plate as the batter wasn't ready for it as the call strike on Pete Fox. The score, 8 to 2 in favor of the Cardinals in the last half of the seventh. He swings hard, the next one drives a high one. The lance he's not going to be faster. Back there is the ball and long comes in, down, comes down, plunks into the big net, and there's one gone. Irvin Fox, Pete Fox, the right fielder of the Tigers, is out. He retires the dugout. After Lancey takes that pitch, the ball has a head up, foul back of the plate. A very, very high one. Dean walks out. The pitcher's mound again. Delancey gets his mask on and just each side to a pitch constantly over the years. And here is Elon Chester Hodgson. Left-handed pitcher and he back left. He's up there to take his place in the batting order. He winds up. Here's the pitch. He tried to bunt, and he missed the ball. And it's strike one. The bat got away from him, rolled halfway up to the pitcher's mound. He tried to bunt that one, lost his hold of the grip or on the bat. And it's strike one. Strike one on the batter. Hodgson, one out. Nobody on. Last half the seventh. Four eight two favor the card. Ball floats over and it's called ball one. It was outside, way wide. Had a change of pace, but couldn't get it over the plate. One and one on the batter. Nobody on. He swings the next one, drives it down to shortstop two or two, pegs it over to first, a nice fast play. The ball got there just ahead of Hodgett, and two men are out. Two men are out, and Joyner White, the head of the batting order for the Detroit Tigers, the American League champions of 1934. The first game of this 1934 World Series with the St. Louis Cardinals. Joyner White's at bat, 4 8 2 in favor of St. Louis. Two men out. It winds up, here's the pitch, and it falls uh, very low over the plate. It's ball one. He drops the plate, got that big black bat of his again. He looks over the pitch, it comes rolling down, and it's a ball right. One and one, Rick Owen calls it. Down there at home plate, umpiring at home today. Bill Clem down on first, guys on second. Here's the third, here's the pitch, he winds up, shoots it in, and it's ball two. Two and one on the batter. Dean hitches up his trousers on the right side, then takes that lazy stamp with his foot on the rubber, looks into the Lancey for the signal, nods his head in the demon, starts that wind up, the half wind up, shoots it in, and the batter swing guard, it sounds away from the catcher, it's strike two, two and two. Lancey keeps the ball hard, back to Dean there, plunks into the net, 
And again, he assumes that stance on the mound. Right foot forward, both arms hanging lazily. White steps out of the box for the moment. Steps back to the plate. Count two and two on him, two out. Steps back up there, now to face the pitcher. The wind up, and the pitch. And he fouls it high up over the stand. Back of home plate. Ball sailing high over there. Trying to get the new ball from umpire Brick Owen. Shoots it back in to Dean. Brick is out here calling encouragement to his men. Bring a lot of pepper into this infield. The outfielders move a little impatiently. Here's the pitch. It comes in and it's a pile strike. He floated one over there. Fooling Joyner White. And it's strike out a pile strike on Mr. White. And the side is retired. The score is 8 to 2 in favor of the Cardinals. All right, Tom Manning, come in. The strike will happen at the seventh inning. Pete Fox was first up, and he called out to Lance. That was a very high foul. The Lance he went back, played it for it, and took it for the first out. Victor Hulkset. Then out to Rocha to Collins. This is a fast play by Leo DeRoche to the Cardinals. First up, and Jojo White up there with two strikes. And Dizzy Dean, very nonchalantly, helped in a change of face offering as big as a pineapple. And White let it go by for a call strike and the third up. At the end of seven innings, we find the National Leaguers, the St. Louis Cardinals, eight, and the American Leaguers, the Detroit Tigers, two. Now, as he tried the eighth inning again, the Tigers have that old black ball out, tossing it around, it's like a piece of coal. They tell me they've used that ball for uh, warming up before each inning, practically all seats. Hawks got to know a softball pitcher is in there for the Tigers, and manager Mike Cochran, as part of the fact that the score is 8 to 2, Cochran is still in there, encouraging his men, and still fighting for this first World Series ball game. First half of the eighth inning, coming for it. Here's Jack Rothrock taking his place in the batter's box. He winds up, here's the pitch, comes over into Carl Strike. Right one on Jack Rothrock, the right fielder of the St. Louis Cardinals here, right starting off the eighth inning, leading 8 to 2. Here's the pitch, comes in, and he half swing it tips off the bat, and it's strike two, a foul tip going high over the that goes back into the sand. He just half one of that one is caught to get his bat. New ball goes back to the pitcher, Elon hugs it. Big Indian boy, left hander, shoots over the plate and the ball he calls it. It was high. One and two. Ball one and strike two. It's around the infield and turns winds up. And he drives one a little easy, went over the second base, head it rolls out there, the right field receiver shoots it in, it's a single for Jack Rothrock. He fought one over three, the ball, just a looper right out there, oh, where nobody can get to it. Nice single for Jack Rothrock. Frankie Trace comes up next. He just walks out to Bill Rogel and taking the ball from him. That's the ball to come in, carrying the ball back in, looking at it. Comes and looks around at Charlie Geringer. And finally turns his attention to Frankie Fraser, who was taking his place in the batter's box. Throws the ball over to Hank Greenberg. There was no chance of getting the runner there, but he crossed over for the moment. Jack Rothrock takes the lead. He's out the front. The pitcher comes in fast. The has no time getting the second. Crosses it down. And Greenberg, instead of going back to touch the plate, catches the runner on the line, coming in to first. Jack Rothrock down on second on the sacrifice. One out. Jack Rothrock on second, and here is Joe Medwick. Joe Medwick, a very defendable batter, up to face Elon Hodges with a man on second, the score eight to two. Hodges is taking his place back there now, with his left foot on the rubber, he looks around at Jack Rothrock, who takes the lead off second. Makes a far long catch into the air, shoots it down, and it's a high fly out into center field, and Jojo White goes back, is under it, and has it. The runner starts down the third, he makes a high throw on down the third, but it was a little wide of the bag, and he flags in safely. Jack Rothrock is down on third base, two out. After Joe Medwick flies to Jojo White, out in center field, which brings Rip Collins. Rip Collins, Cardinals' first tracker. Next in the batting order, up to bat. Man on third, two out. Four, eight, two in favor of St. Louis in the start of the eighth inning. Hogs takes take the ball. Throws him to glove a few times and walks over, picks up the rosin bag, drives his hand, again zooms up the stand. He's had both hands behind his back, cross, looks into the signal, finally winds up, shoots the ball in. It's a bounder down to a second base. Geringer takes it, shoots it down to first, and the side is retired. All right, Tom Manning, you can tell how things happened in the Cardinal half of the eighth inning. Here's Tom Manning. Jack Rothrock was first up, and the singles to right center. Frankie Fritz laid down a pretty sacrifice, and without Mitchell Hofstadt, 
to Greenberg. Greenberg tagging straight on the line. Joey Medlick then got a hold of one and drove it deep into left center field. Jojo White going back to make the catch. Jack Rothrock, went to third. Collins and hit a ground ball down second base for it. Tommy Gerringer came up with it. Tossed to Greenberg, retiring the side. No run, one hit, and no error. And so he's the last half of the eighth inning. St. Louis Cardinals of the National League are out in front, eight to two. Fuller, Fuller goes to center field for the St. Louis Cardinals, replacing Ernie Orsatti. Fuller in center field for the Cardinals. Last half of the eighth inning, the manager Mickey Chocolate, who's back from left handed will lead off for the Titans. Come in for it. Here's Mickey Cochran up there. Take his place. Here in the youth inning, his team feeling eight to two. Your team takes a signal, winds up, comes in, and it's a call strike. Mickey didn't offer at it. Call strike on him. Here in the youth inning. Back there, he takes a couple of five wins as the pitch. He comes in and the ball right of the plate, outside to a left-handed batter. He takes throws his back there around his head one. Puts it back on his shoulder. If he winds up, shoots it in, he doesn't offer out of it. It's a ball. Two balls again. It was wide to a left-handed batter. It's about waist high. He's seen a dusty shot. That wasn't quite to his liking. Take that lazy stand. The Rancher's bringing him to him. If he's standing there swinging his batter as a pitch, he drives it down to the short stop. Andrew Roaster shoots it over to Collins, and he's out. Easy ball for the short stop. The handle and lock it up in the infield. They shoot the ball around. One gone. Here in the eighth inning, the Cardinals leading eight to two. Next man up is Charlie Gerringer, sparkling second baseman of the Tigers. Takes a couple of wraps at the plate. Got a big white bat. Places on his shoulder. He bats left. Here's the pitch. It's a call strike again. The first ball that comes over. Just about waist high and dead over the pan. The call strike on Charlie Gerringer. who did not offer right at all. Kept his bat on his shoulder. He looks good. Dean, who Dean winds up. Shoots in a size again. That change of pace. The floater coming in. And it's wide of the plate by quite a bit. One ball and one strike. One out. Nobody on. Gerringer at bat. Count one and one on it. Here's a pitch. He drives the ball far, wide, and high way out into left center field. And Ducky Medwick came over and got it. Incidentally, we've got a change in outfield at the start of this inning. Six bullets. Six bullets replaced our fatty in the Cardinal center field. Two men are gone, bringing Hank Greenberg up to bat again. Hank Greenberg wipes his hands with dirt, takes all of his bat. Swing it down towards the plate. Takes a couple of toss swings with it now over the plate, and Dean is looking for that signal. He winds up with that half swing of his, shoots the ball in, and again the first ball into the batter is a call strike. Rick Owens indicating it. Two out, nobody on. One strike on the batter. Here's the pitch. A call strike. He's got a one in there. He just turned it over. A fast one and a hot one right dead over the plate, and it's a call strike. Strike two on Hank Greenberg. Two men out. Nobody on. Last half of the eighth. The score eight-two in favor of the St. Louis Cardinals. Hank Greenberg is back for the Tigers. Here's Dean gets the signal. Winds up. It's a fast one. He shoots in. That's a hard driven ball. Three out. is over into the stand for a home run for Big Hank. One another one of his specialties. The Tigers over in there, getting their chance to let go of the Ninja. Big cloud of paper, a little bit of it has been let go. They're floating down hours. As Hank Greenberg spots around the bases, comes in and crosses home plate, steps on it. A home run by Hank Greenberg makes the score 8-3. to three. He drove it high into those left field bleachers, where those 17,000 bleachers right got up and whooped over their hero, Hank Greenberg, drives into their midst. Here's Dean looking like batter over, which is Goose Goslin. Always a dangerous man at the plate. Shoots the ball in, and the Goose fouls it high. Delancey knocks his mask off, goes back after it. It comes down and hits the screen just too far in for him to get it. He looks like it was coming down into his hands, but Delancey didn't have a chance to get to that ball, and it's strike one on the Goose. Nobody on, one run in. Score eight to three in favor of the St. Louis Cardinals. Two men out. Goose Goslin at bat. That's left, you know. Throws right, however. Take his face back in there. Taking a couple of style swings. Here's gets the signal. That short wind up is he's taking it longer this time. Two swings and shoots it over. And it's a strike. He swung hard, very hard and very viciously at that ball. But got nothing to his own but the amount of air which is in front of his back. It's strike two on the goose. 
Mickey Clay back down there now. Look at the combination on that set again of Bruce Garland. Wind up. Set and the pitch. And he drives it down to the shortstop. The Roacher has it. Pets it over to Rip Collins. And the side is retired. Eight to three in favor of St. Louis. As we come into the last half of the eight, here's Tom and to tell you about the Tiger. The Cardinal pass of the eighth inning. Here, come in, Tom. Tiger half the eighth inning. We saw Phillips going into center field for the Cardinals. Mickey Cockrell was first up, and he was out to Rocher to Collins. Tommy Gellinger, then fly to Joey Medley. Medley going into deep left center to make the catch. Hank Greenberg then got a hold of one and parked it high in to the left field bleachers for a home run, making it 8-3. to three. Two Cosman then brought it out shortstop to Rocher to first baseman Collins. Tiger half of the eighth inning, one run, one hit, and no error. So at the end of eight innings, the St. Louis Cardinals of the National League eight and the Detroit Tigers three. We go to the ninth inning of this first game of the World Series at Maven Field, Detroit. Steve Hofstra, a southpaw pitcher, is presently in the box for the Tigers, and Cochran is behind the back. First half of the ninth, and Delancey of the Cardinals is first up. Bill Delancey, the Cardinals catcher, first up there. He's got a big bat. Let me trap an alley off. Comes up here's the pitch, and it's a ball wide of the plate. That left. Ball was wide and outside. The left-handed batter, Hogg just got the ball again, and the signal is the pitch. This is in, he fouls it up clear into the press box, and the press man has the ball. Is he going to return it? Well, that's the question here at the moment. Usually balls go back into the playing field, but somebody wants a souvenir of the 1934 World Series, and it stays up in the press box. The ball goes into the game. It's... Bill Delancey down there in the batter's box. He winds up, there's the pitch. Shoots in, and it strikes two. He swung hard at that one, but connected with nothing at all. Goes off and wipes his hands. He's in dirt. Takes his place back at the box. Taps the plate. Here's the pitch. It's a ball. Three and two on the batter. Three and two on Bill Delancey. What will the next one be? Always a question in the batter's mind when it's three and two. He comes looping down, he drives it hard. It looks like it's going to the big one. Up by two shots and goes back up against the fence and takes it on the run. It, that ball looks like another one of those homers into those left field bases. So Delancey retires the dugout. There's one gone here in the Cardinals half of the ninth inning. Dick Fuller, who has just replaced Orsatti in the eighth inning in center field for the Cardinals, is next up. Dick Batson throws right. He's taking his place down there in the batter's box now. Ball comes shooting over. It's wide of the plate. It's a ball. Wide to an outside to a right-handed batter. One ball. Also has it again. Looks over the signal. Winds up. Shoots it in. He drives it. Hot over second base. Way out into center field. It's good for a single. Jojo White throws it back in. A single for Dick Fuller. He just come into the ball game. That was his first time at bat. Leo DeRocher. Start stop. St. Louis Cardinals next up. Score eight to three. Favor of the Cardinals here in the ninth inning. First half of the ninth. The Rochers at bat. A man on. One out. Hogg is looking now. First turn. Shoots it in fast. And it's a foul into the Tigers' dugout. Taking two policemen and a player guard. The policeman is coming down at the end of the dugout. The Rochers up there. Strike one on him. Man on base. One gone. Score eight to three. He has a reputation for being able to hit, and it means something when there's a man on. His batting average, 258 for the season, but he got most of those when it meant something when there's a man on base. Hodges has the ball after trying it over to Greenberg, trying to see what he could do with Mr. Bullock. He drives it up, down to the shortstop, and spikes it to second, but there wasn't time to get it down to first. Man is out at second. Dick Bullock and DeRocher is on first base with two outs. Dizzy Dean comes up. Dizzy Dean, and he's getting a nice hand from the fans. As he walks out of the dugout, comes sailing very slowly up to the plate, walks around back to Bickle, and then Mickey Cochran to take his place, wipes his hand in the dirt, picks up the bat again, taps the plate, and makes his zip on it, looks back at the pitcher, here's the pitch. A boundary right down towards second, it's fielded by Garrett, who runs over, steps on the second base, forcing the runner out at second. That was the ninth inning for the Cardinals to lead 8-3, and here's Tom Manning to tell you about it. 
the final half of the ninth inning, Delancey was first up. Delancey fired deep to Gosnell. That was a nice running catch by the two. Playing over Vic Ford left center and dashed back into left field to tag that long drive. Sid Fuller, who recently replaced Moscati, single to better field. Here's the Wilson, then forced Fuller to go Gallo to Gallinger. And Dizzy Keene had the falling double pitches. Then forced to Rocher, down at Gallinger, on a tip, under the ground ball, hit very close to the second base pass. The score is in the last half of the ninth inning. Pedro Cardinals, eight. The Tigers, three. Come in for it. Third time this afternoon, now you might hear that World Series baseball game. Here we have William George Rogel. Back, and he fouled off the first pitch here in the ninth inning. Driving it back on a foul into the grandstand, the upper tier. The ball sliding off the top of the bat. His team's out there looking over the signals again. He winds up. Well, Gallagher's just bat is a pick. It's a ball. Wide to the plate, and it's one and one. Bill Rogel is back in the ninth inning. First man up. Winds up, and here's the pitch again. Comes shooting in again. It's outside, missing the corner, and it's ball two. Two and one on the batter. Ninth inning with the Cardinals leading eight to three. Over the Detroit Packers in its first game in Nathan Field. Here's Jay shooting the pitch, and again, he swings and fires that one back mile into the grandstand. Just to left the plate. Bill Rogel was stepped out of the batter's box. Just back again, adjusting his cap, got the plate. Has a big black bat over his shoulder, takes a couple of tire swings. Here's his one winding up. Takes a double wind up this time. Oh, oh, out of the batting box. And he's swinging up arm again. He's starts to move his wind up again, takes the stretch and shoots the ball in. And the machine, the big, he drives it down the road to the left field. Right into left field over the third base and hat. A nice single for Bill Rogel here in the ninth inning. These Tigers have had a reputation for plenty of runs. Filing on to a pitcher in the ninth, and the crowd is warming up. It's trying to try to here in Maven Field. Trying to get hot and try to rally here in the ninth inning. For their team, their wild, his favorite, favoring their home downers. They're trying to stop having the old familiar. Stepped on the back for the out to the man down on second now. Bill Rogel down on second. One out, one on. He's back, coming to bat. Bill Rogel down on second. He back the right fielder. Well, the tag is up there. He back right. He stepped in there with a determined look on his chin. Here's the ninth inning with his team drilling eight to three. He looks around second base and shoots one inning. Swings hard. Missing the ball and it's strike one on Pete Pat. Ball goes back to Pierce. Here's a watch of that man on second. Either to Rush or a bigger thing. That's in there's the pitch. Comes in and it's a ball and a low one. Clancy picks it out of the dirt back of the plate. And he's taking it right down on the ground to get it out of there. One and one. All one and strike one. And on, one out in the ninth inning. Four, eight to three. Tigers sailing. He swings right, drives one. All right, down to the third base. He catches it. Catches the man coming in the third. Throws it over. A very low throw to Rip Collins. We don't let it be scored. Rick won the air. He's on the man who made the throw. It was low. He tagged Joe Gell. I got the man over there. They had to throw over to first, but they couldn't get the man at first, but he dropped that ball. Rick Allen dropped it. We have Hawker coming in to bat for Hodgett here in the ninth. Hawker coming in to bat for Hodgett. Man on first. Two out. Martin did a great job driving that ball and getting another man coming in there and then trying to wing it over to first. Here's the pitch, and it's a ball. A ball on Arthur, who has replaced Hodgson here in the ninth inning. Two out, man on. He's pitching good, he shoots it in, and he swings hard, getting nothing for his trouble. It's one and one, ball one and strike one on Arthur. Arthur at the plate. Yeah. We misunderstood the name from down there at the last speaker, who's Arthur, Robin Arthur. He drives one down, but it goes five before it gets the first. Arthur batting for Hodgson. He 
young men here on the Tiger team. Coming over the last week of the man was announced in the dugout. Walker, batting Gary Walker. Southern boy with an accent which is up for the ninth. We were talking to him, he's up there now, he's back right. Center fielder. Here's look at him hard. Turns around, looks at the man at first, over his shoulder, shoots the ball in and it's high. And it's another ball, it's two and two on Jerry Walker. Walker steps out of the box and seeing that motion, gives up back and picks up the rosin bag. Contest, the whistle takes his place first, and they both step back in. Here's get the signal, makes the stretch, looks over his shoulder, shoots the ball in, and again it's wide, and it's three and two. Three and two, two out, a man on first. Shots on first. Here's the pitch. He swings hard for the third strike, and the end of the ball game. Jerry Walker missing the offering of Jerry Dean. The broadcast of this game has been sent to you by the Ford Motor Company. Builders of Ford and Lincoln Cars and Ford Trucks. You're partially invited to be their guest again tomorrow, when the World Series battle is resumed at Maven Field. And in the meantime, watch the Fords go by. Now we'll turn the microphone over to Tom Manning. We'll give you a summary of the game and his highlights. All right, Tom Manning, come here. For well, the benefit of our many friends who have just tuned in, the final score today, first game of the World Series, the Cardinals 8, the Tigers 3. The Cardinals 8 runs on 13 hits, the Cards make 2 runs. The Tigers 3 runs, 8 hits, and 5 runs. Things went along rather smoothly in the first inning with no score. In the Cardinal half of the second inning, Delancey was out on a fly ball to Dawson. Ozani then singled to left field. Carosa was up. He was out on a fly to White. Dean then drove to Rogel and Hardy. Ozani was safe at second base. On Gerringer's Keller. Couple Martin. Then with two on and two out, hit a foul to third. He was safe at first on a wide throw. Rock Rock singled to center, throwing Ozani and Dean. Martin went to third, Rock Rock dropped to first. Frank Fritz was then out, Gerringer to Dean Cardinal half of the second, two runs on two hits. The Tigers make two errors. Then we hop over to the first half of the third inning. Joey Medley led off with a single past third base. Collins round it out. Medley cut the second. Rogel threw badly and took another error. Delosia was then safe at first on Greenberg's error. And Collins scored all the way from second. They took a beautiful slide just ahead of the throw at home plate. Ozani then tries to right field. Delosia tries to pop. The final half of the third is put them three runs ahead of the Tigers. One run on one hit and two more errors for the Tigers. The Tigers scored that first run in the last half of the third. Carter was first up. He was out. He was the call. Plate left. Mickey Chapman, single, after the call, has got the three and two, he's single to left field. Right front of the second. single, scoring right. And they just scored three to one at the end of three innings. No more scoring then until the car came to bat in the first half of the fifth inning. Ludwig then got a hold of one and drove it high into the left field, three for a home run. Collins, after getting a count of three and two, he wet. Rocher then flies to White. Orzani, single to left field, Collins went to second. Rocher, end of the inning, flying out to White. Makes the score four to one in favor of the Tigers. In the sixth inning, the Cardinals really broke out, led by the great Jersey team, who after being led by the crowd for missing a strike by double yards, he then parked a two-base hit against the barrier in left field. Couple Martin, single to center field, and Dean across the plate, five to one the Cardinals. Jack Rothrock laid down a sacrifice, Marbury to Greenberg. Quick, followed out to Owen. This was a great shot by Bob Owen, who ran some 40 to 50 yards away from the third base, pushing down the left field to make the catch. Joey Medwick, with a count two and two, his fourth hit of the afternoon, with a single to right field, scoring Martin, making it the card six, Tigers one. Collins, then gave perfect execution of a hit to run play with a ringing single to right field, sending Joey Medwick to third. At this point, Hulkset replaced Barbelli. Hulkset is a southpaw. Gilanti doubled against the barrier, sending Medwick and Collins across the plate, making it 8-1 to the Cardinals. Morgani then bounded out, Geringer to Greenberg. In the sixth inning, the Cards scored four runs on five hits and no errors. The Tigers came back in the last half of the sixth inning with Geringer going out, Collins to 
Greenberg. Single to center field. When all got him, tried to shoot Green shot. He was given an error because Greenberg went to second. Bruce Goslin singles to left field, and Greenberg scores. Eight to two, the card. Rogel, the guy splits the column. Goslin went to second. Owen then struck up. No more scoring then until the tiger half of the eighth inning. At that time, Ricky Cochran was first up. He was out to the the column. Garringer tried to Medley. Hank Greenberg came up and smacked a long drive into the newly erected stand in deep left field at Haven Field for a home run, making it 8-3, to three, which was the final score. The Tiger half of the eighth inning, one run, one hit, and no errors. For the final score in summary again, the St. Louis Cardinals, representative of the National League, eight runs, 13 hits, and two errors. The Detroit Tigers, representing the American League, three runs, eight hits, and five errors. The starting pitchers this afternoon, Jerome Dizzy Jean, who turned in 30 great victories in the regular campaign for the National League Senate. He was opposed by General Crowder. General Crowder, you know, is one of the outstanding right-hand pitchers of the American League for several years, particularly during the playing season of 1933, when he turned in a great number of victories to assist the Washington Senators in winning the American League Senate. However, he appeared to be plenty tired in the series last year and failed. But he came back again this afternoon, inspired by new surroundings, the crowd out here at Detroit. He went in the box this afternoon, but was treated rather roughly by the representatives of the National League, the St. Louis Cardinals. The outstanding plays this afternoon have been quite agreed by the fourth bond, Andrea Matthew and yours truly. Of course, the two long matches for home runs. Both in the left field reaches. One by Joey Medrick of the Cardinals, the other by the first base from Hank Greenberg of the Tigers. Bob Owen shot to that long foul. It was a flipper. Any time a third tracker goes 40 or 50 yards down the left field with his back to the plate, that is easily the outstanding play of the day. Billy Rochelle turned in two great plays for seventh inning. He leaped into the air for a bad boundary. Got his man at first. Then a fly ball with Ted Sandwich in between. And for the third out of that seventh inning, Billy Rochelle dashed over close to second base cushion, went down on one knee, and came up with a skipper that was a slow play and got it over to first base for another out. And now, don't forget, weather permitting, the Ford Motor Company brings you another World Series game tomorrow at 1.15 Eastern Standard Time. The report of this first of the 1934 World Series between the St. Louis Cardinals and the Tigers of Detroit is sent to you through the facilities of the National Broadcasting Company. Goodbye. I hope you enjoyed Game 1 of the 1934 World Series as the Cardinals handed the Tigers the Game 1 loss, 8-3. The Tigers making five errors cost themselves a chance at this game, and over 42,000 fans attended this game, and now you have too. Now, on to the trivia. This player is one of two pitchers who gave up a home run to Babe Ruth and a hit to Joe DiMaggio during his 56-game hitting streak. Who am I? He won an MVP award, which is rare for pitchers, in 1930. He was also signed by scout Jack Dunn, the same man who found Babe Ruth. And he was then sold for a record, at the time, $100,000 contract. Who am I? Robert Moses Grove, better known as Lefty. If you're hungry for more, there are thousands of stories on thisdayinbaseball.com. And don't forget to ring the bell to get all the updates as they happen. And we do appreciate thumbs up and any other feedback. And certainly, if you know of other baseball fans who'd like to hear about these stories, please share our videos with them, and we'll see you on the next Rewind.